I Feel Love is Donna Summer and Giorgio Moroder's 1977 disco anthem. It's the song that signaled the beginning of electronic dance music. Its production is almost entirely built on synthesized sounds. There's a propulsive bass line with a delay effect, a four on the floor kick drum, snare hits and hi-hats, and Donna Summer's soaring vocal. These elements make for a dance track that is hypnotic in its repetition. I Feel Love is a song that illustrates just how much disco changed pop music. Not only through its sound and structure, but in the newly invented vinyl format that gave it a natural home. A 12-inch single. This is a 7-inch single. It pretty much ruled pop music since the beginning of rock and roll. It's the format that powered jukeboxes, teen record players, and most importantly, the radio. It was a small, cheap, and durable record that, when spun at 45 RPM, was just large enough to fit three and a half minutes of good audio on each side. You've probably heard it called a 45. So this chart shows just how much the 7-inch single dominated pop music. From the 1950s through the 60s, the average length of number one hit songs was about two and a half to three and a half minutes. It was only in pop music that there, there tended to be this sense that it needed to be three, three and a half minutes, and that was for radio and because of the seven-inch format. That's Paul Morley. He's known for a lot of things. I'm an author, critic, broadcaster, an occasional musician, and an occasional remixer. Okay, back to the story. Those three-minute singles had become a standard on the radio, but dance clubs demanded a totally different musical experience. In the early 1970s in New York City, a handful of scrappy DJs made the dance floor more important than ever. One of them was Nicky Ciano. I owned a club called The Gallery, which was the template for every club in the later 70s. At his club, Ciano figured out the best songs and techniques to keep people dancing. There's a song by Samanda called Bra. It's got this break that is out of this world. Dum, dum. We would take that record and just go back and forth and back and forth with that break. By using two turntables, sometimes three, DJs like Ciano can make that break last forever. Flipping those 45s, that's work. That is work. It was work because the naturally short length of 45s left little time for DJs to plan their next move. So they started to search for longer material to work with. Eddie Kendrick's Girl You Need a Change of Mind is often cited as one of the first disco records. that record came on, it filled the dance floor, and it was peak record. Anywhere you went in New York City. It was a gospel-inspired track that had an extended two-minute break. The single version was over six minutes long. The only way it fit on a 45 was because it was split across two sides of the record. It bastardized the song. I had to play it on the LP. I, I just felt the fidelity, everything was so much better. The longer the song on a 45, the more narrow and compressed the grooves have to be so it can fit on that tiny amount of space. But that compromises the quality of the audio because it's those grooves that determine how the record sounds. You'll hear less bass and dynamic range on more compressed grooves. You put four minutes, four and a half, five minutes, it tended to get smaller and be squashed. The grooves were too squashed. The sound would be too squashed. By 1973, a number of tracks that blew up in New York City's discos crossed over to the Billboard charts. The success of Soul Makosa by Mano Dibango was single-handedly propelled by its heavy play at New York City clubs. Atlantic Records re-released the single in the U.S. due to its popularity in New York City, and it made it on the Billboard charts. Same thing happened with Love Theme, arranged by Barry White. It was a number one hit, which was a very rare feat for a fully instrumental track. We started playing it really heavy. It made the charts. 
before it ever was played on the radio. And that's how we became more influential. This 1974 Billboard article captures just how much influence DJs had on the music industry. It says record labels were mixing records specifically for New York City clubs. They were making those edits longer, and more importantly, they were bringing DJs into the studio to pull it off. But the dilemma with distribution remained. Either cut the song down for the radio, split it across two sides, or squeeze the five plus minute remix on one side of the single, compromising the quality of audio. Almost by complete accident, a disco producer came up with the solution, a 12 inch single. The man behind the discovery was Tom Moulton. He had a remix of a song on tape, which he would typically then record onto a seven inch for a reference. He didn't have any uh, acetates that he could do that with, so he, he, he just put it on a 12 inch, which usually you would put on 10 songs. Immediately, he discovered that stretching one song across 12 inches dramatically changed the sound of the record. Because the grooves were wider space, there would be more power and force. He realized that this would create uh, a more energetic, a more lively sound. In short, producers could stretch out the length of a single, which proved very handy for DJs. It was revolutionary, you know? It was like, wow, we can go to the bathroom, we can go do drugs, we can go, you know, smoke a joint. Almost immediately, 12-inch singles replaced 45s in clubs. But a debate erupted on whether or not they were worth the production cost to sell to everyday consumers. The success of 10% by Double Exposure, the first commercially available 12-inch single, proved its worth. Though based on these singles, it was still unclear what they were called. Very quickly in, in the disco world, the, the 12 inches were turned into commercial formats because there was a demand for them. Those that liked dancing to, to the 12 inch in the clubs wanted to be able to buy it. And that's exactly what happened with I Feel Love. Very exciting, you know, because it sounded space age, it sounded other. You know, the idea of setting up rhythm and repetition and, and, and almost drone, if you like. You could start to do that in a more exciting way using synthesizers and sequences. The song was originally the B-side of a seven-inch single. By the end of 1977, it had been released in various forms, finally finding its most iconic home on 12 inches of vinyl. In, in many ways, it, it gave a whole new lease of life to the idea of pop music. And it's the lease of life that really has kept pop music going to this day. The 12-inch single ruled nearly every genre in the 1980s, not least because releasing a 7-inch version and a 12-inch version of a track at precisely the right time in a promotional cycle often kept popular songs on the charts for longer. The, the record companies loved it because it gave them the opportunity to sell more copies and keep the profile up. But more importantly, the 12-inch single allowed for unfettered musical exploration. The, the one that I fell in love with as soon as I heard it and still love it to this day wasn't really a, a remix as such at all. It, it just existed in itself, which was Blue Monday. Blue Monday by New Order is the most commercially successful 12-inch single of all time. It was released in 1983 and was packaged in a sleeve that looked like a floppy disk. It's not a 7-inch turned into a 12-inch. It begins life as a 12-inch. It's not a remix. That's the length that it was. From 1970 through the 1980s, the average length of number one pop songs nearly doubled. And the 12-inch single probably had a lot to do with it. Any music that's made electronically and is made with a, a kind of experimental purpose, whether that's in hip hop or electronic music, its beginnings in many ways was the 12-inch remix. Making earworm takes a lot of time and energy, and when I'm on hour 14 of animating, the last thing I want to do is stare at my screen and try to remember old passwords or worry about my data being hacked. That is why I'm excited to tell you about Dashlane. Dashlane is the perfect tool to help keep you safe online. You don't have to worry about getting locked out of accounts, resetting your passwords, or your internet history being monitored. All you have to do is download it and Dashlane will take care of the rest. It'll notify you if websites you have logins for get hacked or if your data gets compromised. Dashlane also includes a secure multi-country VPN for all your devices at a much lower cost than its competitors. So go to dashlane.com slash fox to get a 30-day free trial of Dashlane Premium. And if you like it, you can use promo code VOX to get 10% off Dashlane Premium. Dashlane doesn't directly impact our editorial, but their support makes videos like this possible. So click the URL in the description and check them out.